Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to talk about this little fella right here, the Olight Seeker 3 Pro. So let's talk about it real quick. Alright, so the Seeker 3 Pro, before we really get into it, I've got to say this was sent to me by Olight for purposes of review. This sounds like a thing I say all the time now, but really, anything you really see from Olight, um, most of the stuff, this is all sent to me to look at, review, and make videos of, all right? So take what I say with a grain of salt if you have to, but as always, we're just going to try to give our honest, not try, we are going to give our honest opinion, whether it's good, it's good, or bad, or bad, all right? So anyway, this thing was just sent here, and I honestly got this yesterday, uh, opened it up, shot a video, didn't like how that video turned out, so we're reshooting the video again. And this is just an overview. I've literally had this thing for barely 24 hours and I haven't had a whole lot of personal use with it. So we're just gonna talk about some features of it real quick and that's pretty much it, all right? I will definitely be using this in the future just as a flashlight and I'm, I think it's gonna have some serious, um, serious use, all right? Moving on, the Seeker 3 Pro. Here's the back of the box if you need to screenshot and look at that kind of stuff, whatever. But basically what you've got here is you've got 4,200 lumens. That's what it says, 4,200 lumens, all the way down to five lumens. So you've got different steps that you can have as far as brightness goes. Um, at five lumens, it says you'll get 15 days of use. Okay, that's pretty impressive. That is only five lumens though. At full bore, if you have it on turbo mode, um, let's see, you get about two and a half minutes to 127 minutes plus 35 minutes. So what is that? That's 127, so that's about 130, 165, almost three hours of use. Roughly less than three hours of use. That's what it looks like. Um, so what does that mean? I don't know. That means that this is a utility light, right? This is probably something I could envision the purpose of this light as being a good backpack light, right? Because at five lumens, it's going to last you forever, right? Not forever, but it's going to last you a long time. And you're gonna be able to like read your maps, look at stuff in the dark, whatever that you need to use. And if you need a high flashlight or a high beam flashlight, then you've got access to it, right? Um, real quick, we'll show what it looks like, that the beam looks like, kind of back here like we usually do. Um, but before that, the only stuff that comes in the box, the only stuff that comes in the box, whatever, it comes with a nice little carry case, which I've actually found this carry case to be proper size for a dead air mask, believe that or not. Um, it's kind of cool. I don't think it's heat, uh, heat, resistant or heat, whatever, heat absorbent. It's made for the flashlight, not for a suppressor. Don't put a hot suppressor in there. Anyway, it comes with a little carrier and your charging cable. Um, you do need a charging cable. This does come with it. Obviously, it's one of those magnetic ones, um, kind of their universal magnet charger kind of things that they've got. Um, so if you've got any of their their Odins, um, the Balder, I think, is a little one. It's a mini whatever. But the, the Odins and the bigger flashlights, I have another flashlight from them, the uh, the Warrior, the M2R Pro Warrior, right? Same same deal. So if you got one of these, then you have an extra charger somewhere. All right, so put that guy away. Um, so yeah, that's the stuff that it comes with. Nothing else, really. I mean, instructions and stuff. So talking about the light, real quick, real quick. What kind of battery do we have? That stuff underneath the table. What kind of battery do we have? It's a... Uh, make sure I say this right. It's a 21,700 battery. One of these series batteries. A big chunky boy, right? Not an 18650, but the bigger brother to the 18650. And these batteries go in backwards. Most of the time, the positive side goes towards the front. This time, the positive side goes towards the rear. I thought it was messed up whenever I opened the box. I was like, that's really weird for that to be there. But I read the instructions, which you should always do. And, uh, yeah, it, and it, well, while we have this taken apart, it, it, it does go in backwards. While we have it taken apart, you can see it is O-ring sealed, and this does have, it says it has an IPX rating, whatever IPX means, I don't know, an IPX8, right? Which means basically, in essence, if I understand it right, it can go underwater. It's not a scuba dive flashlight, but if you drop it in the water, you're not going to kill it, right? That's my understanding of it. And I'm not a scientist, and I don't proclaim to know all this stuff. Um, talking about the use of the light, or the operation of the light, per se, um, per se. I'm using weird words today. I don't know why. Anyway, the use of light has one button, but it's not just a button. It's also a ring and it, it kind of dials kind of like if you're fancy and you got, you know, a watch, whatever, kind of like the little crown on the edge. Um, anyway, you can push the button and well, it's not going to turn on, right? Why? Because it's in lockout mode. I had to read that. I was like, why is it in lockout mode? So you can sit there and press the button all day. It's not going to do anything. You have to turn 
this little crown 90 degrees. So basically you just turn it around, then the light will turn on when you hit the button, okay? So on the side here, it, it has, it's gonna go away, it lasts for three seconds. So if you turn the bezel, it's gonna show you on the side, it has the different levels of battery that it has, right? It stays lit for three seconds, right? I think is what it is. So it shows you the different levels of battery and also shows you on what level the light is on, right? This shows that it's on level two, okay? So if you turn the light on, okay, then you can either turn the light on and hold it down and you'll see what happens. So I turn the light on and I hold it down and it goes through its different modes. It goes to low, medium, high, okay? If it's on high and I let go, it stays on high, right? I let go. Uh, whatever mode you have it left on, there's medium and I let go and it stays on medium. Um, high, low, stays on low, whatever. Um, those are your big jumps, your low, medium, high. If you double click, a quick double click, goes to turbo, right? Turbo is actually pretty bright. Uh, when I first got, that's why I reshot the video because when I got the flashlight in, it was not fully charged, so it wouldn't go to a true turbo mode. That's bright. Turbo, that's, that's, that's bright enough to do what you need to do, right? That's a nice, good beam, okay? Um, the, the little crown thing is also useful because if you just turn the light on and you start turning the crown, it's going to go up. So that's, I think that's turbo, right? Yeah. So that got, it dials all the way up to turbo, but also if you go backwards and go the other way, it dims all the way back down to, I'm assuming that's the five lumen lumens, right? So it's got kind of an infinite adjustment from low to turbo, right? Just depending on where you dial it in. Um, with that with that crown. So that's kind of cool. You have a very fine-tuned adjustment of how much light you want to have. Um, and I don't remember if it remembers the last mode you're on. I think it does. So if I turn it into somewhere like that, turn the light off, turn the light on, there you go, it's on. Um, double click, woo, and it goes to bright. Um, it goes to turbo. There you go. That's still pretty bright. Okay, so anyway, um, that's pretty much the basics of the flashlight. Where do I see this thing being useful? I see it being very useful as like a glove box flashlight, right? Something to keep in a toolbox, something to bring camping with you, um, because I believe it's like three minutes or something if, if, the, if the light's turned off, and I'll have to read the instructions and you just look it up, whatever. Um, but if the light's turned off for a while, it goes into like a power saving safety mode or whatever. And so like I had it earlier, whenever I click the button and it wouldn't turn on, it goes into that mode. So if you're carrying this in your backpack or in your pocket, unless you're turning that bezel 90 degree, not bezel, that, that crown 90 degrees, um, it kind of locks itself out, which is nice because this is not, I don't want the people getting out there saying, it'd be a terrible tactical light and you're gonna get yourself killed because you can't turn it on under stress. This is true, and this is not a tactical light. This is not a tactician's kind of thing. This is a utility light, a work light, right? A camping light, not an emergency tool for like operations or whatever big word you want to throw in there. This is like a utility light, okay? So don't get don't don't mix the two things up there because not every flashlight needs to be a tactical light because um, they're just not going to work that way. But for a utility light, camping light, hiking light, stuff like that. Great. Um, I think that that's where this guy's really going to shine. See what I did there? It's going to shine. Um, anyway, so that's the Seeker 3. Um, I don't remember any other specific stuff about it that should be told. Um, it does have a grippy, rubbery texture on the Warrior that I have that I've been carrying for a little while. It does not have a grippy, rubbery texture. It's kind of got a... a uh, I, the word is escaping me. It's not chamfered. It's not grated. It is a stippled. It's not even stippled. It has grooves in it. Whatever term I'm trying to think of. Ribbed. Wow. Okay, that comment could go crazy. But it, it does have grooves on there to help you keep hold of the thing. This guy has rubber on there, which I would assume under wet conditions or whatnot, if you're camping, like I was saying, um, or hiking or whatever, if it gets wet, you could still hold on to it, all right? I'm gonna shut up before the comments get crazy. But anyway, that's pretty much it. That's, I think it's got a, I think it's got a, um, a good use for what it is. Again, don't try to use this for some kind of tactical thing and don't blow up the comments saying that it's a terrible tactical light because I know it is a terrible tactical light because it's not made for that, right? You wouldn't take a Honda Civic into a war zone and try to strap a tank turret to the top of it. It is a vehicle, but it's not made for that, right? All right, 
Hope that makes sense. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. Um, I will be using this, um, I, especially now in the winter months up here in Alaska. Uh, it gets pretty uh, cold. It gets pretty dark, right? Right now it is 520 and it's dark as night outside because it's dark as night outside. And it's going to stay that way until probably around yeah, 8, 9 in the morning. Pretty crazy. So having a flashlight for whenever I go out and stuff, even if you're walking around on the trails or whatever, you need a light. Um, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, let me know. Appreciate you watching, subscribing, everything. Appreciate Olight for sending this out to look at. And I can't wait to get some more use for it later. All right? Y'all be good to be safe. And hopefully, we will catch you guys in the next video.